guy is yeah. Luke Stefanovic Karadzic, yeah. the great reformer of our language. Bom on us drop our allies, like American and English people. Okay. In the early 2022, when the world was still struggling with COVID-19 and very few countries were offering travel visas, I decided to visit a country where I didn't need a visa to travel to. I could have gone to Morocco, Albania or Turkey, but I decided to visit a city which is not very touristy, a city that was destroyed more than 40 times and rebuilt every single time, a city with a diverse set of architecture, history and many more. So I decided to visit Belgrade, the capital of Serbia. When I was in your position, I was suggesting we bomb Belgrade. If President Milosevic will not make peace, we will limit his ability to make war. So why did Joe Biden want to bomb Belgrade? Why is the souvenirs of Vladimir Putin sold on the streets of Serbia? Why is Serbia closer to Russia than European Union? If you are a history lover or if you are someone who is planning to visit Belgrade, then this video is for you. The history of Belgrade goes back to 7000 BC. The region around Danube was divided into several small kingdoms, tribes and clans during the Bronze Age, Iron Age and the Medieval Era. They were involved in several wars which I don't want to cover in this video. So I will simply fast forward and go to the 12th century. The first unified Serbian state, which kind of gave an identity to the modern day Serbs, was formed in the 12th century under the leadership of Stefan Nemanja. He founded the Nemanic dynasty. During the Nemanic dynasty, Serbia entered into a golden period of growth and prosperity for almost 300 years. Stefan Nemanja's third and youngest son, Rastko, became the monk and took the name of Sava. So, Saint Sava is the first Archbishop of Serbia and he is very important to the faith of modern day Serbia and Montenegro. Now, fast forward to 1450s. Ottoman Empire was at its peak under Mehmet II. The southern part of Serbia lost its independence to Turkish rulers. Serbia was under the subjugation of the Ottomans till the middle of the 19th century. After several wars, they finally managed to win against the Ottomans and formed the Principality of Serbia in 1878. However, the northern part of Serbia, that is the modern day autonomous Vojvodina, was under the domination of the Habsburgs or the Austro Hungarians till 1918, that is the end of the World War I. Talking about World War I, Serbia was with the Allied forces of Britain, France, USA, and Russia. That's why my friend from Skadalia told that Americans and English people were once our allies. Now Austria-Hungary or the Habsburgs and the Ottoman Turkey were on the losing side in World War I. Since Austria-Hungary lost in the World War I, Serbia managed to integrate Vojvodina into the Principality of Serbia. This led to the formation of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Fast forward to World War II. Yugoslavia was on the winning side in World War II. However, the political landscape of Yugoslavia changed during the war. From the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, it became the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Parliamentary elections were held in 1945. That's when the most famous Yugoslav came into picture. Oh no, I'm not talking about Novak Djokovic here. I'm talking about Josip Broz Tito. He became the Prime Minister, President and the Marshal of Yugoslavia. Tito's ideal of socialism was more like a market socialism, but it wasn't about a free market like capitalism. So Tito and Yugoslavia neither supported Russia and the capitalist USA during the Cold War, at least in theory. So that's when the Third World or Non-Alignment Movement came into picture. After the death of Tito in 1980, Yugoslavia was torn into conflicts and civil wars in the 1990s. Even today, the conflict with Kosovo is still ongoing. Yugoslavia disintegrated into seven countries over time. So, why did USA attack Serbia? You see, after the breakup of Yugoslavia in 1990s, there was political unrest in the Balkans. So, there was civil wars in several countries like Bosnia and Herzegovina. There was also civil war in Kosovo and several ethnic Albanians were killed by the Serbian military. In response to this event, NATO forces led by USA 
attacked Serbia without the prior approval of United Nations. So they bombed Belgrade and several other places around it for almost 10 weeks. The NATO forces were never put on trial for bombing Belgrade or killing the innocent Serbian civilians. So when I visited Belgrade in April 2022, the Russia-Ukraine war was relatively fresh. So I saw a lot of anti-NATO sentiments on the street. There was a lot of pro-Putin and pro-Russia sentiments. This was something surprising for me because most of the other countries in Europe had economically sanctioned Russia. There are three main reasons why Serbia is closer to Russia. The first reason is the common culture. Both Serbia and Russia share a common faith, that is, the Orthodox Christianity. But if you look at the other Western countries, then they either follow Catholic or Protestant form of Christianity. Moreover, both Russian and Serbian languages are Slavic languages. The second reason is the Russian support in wars. Russia supported Serbia during its wars of independence against the Ottoman Turkey. Russia also supported Serbia in the Balkan Wars as well as in the World Wars. So the third and one of the most weird reasons is the anti-NATO sentiments. So both Russia and Serbia share a common dissatisfaction or frustration towards NATO. You all know the relationship between Russia and NATO. After the NATO bombings of Serbia in 1999, there was a mutual anger and frustration against the West. Although there are many other factors, but these are the main factors which make Russia the major ally of Serbia. I hope I have been able to explain the history of Serbia. If you like this video, then do like and subscribe to this channel.